Now we're going to look at cases in which the metal can have more than one charge. So copper can exist as either copper 1 or copper 2. And basically all of the transition metals except silver, zinc, and cadmium can have multiple charges. Silver is always plus 1 and zinc and cadmium are always plus 2 and so they don't really participate in this. But all the other transition metals do. So, to specify the cation charge, we can use the stock system in which we place a Roman numeral in parentheses after the metal ion to indicate the charge. So, iron 3 chloride. You don't use them with uh, metals that can only have one charge because every chemist just knows sodium is always plus one, potassium is always plus one, magnesium is always plus two, calcium is always plus two, aluminum is always plus three. And so there's no need to specify that because it has to be that. But in the cases where there's multiple possibilities, a chemist does have to articulate what the charge on that metal ion is. So in this case, we will write the cation name and then write the charge in Roman numerals in parentheses. And so let's go over our Roman numerals. We got one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Just the X is ten. And so those one that is one through ten, and that's pretty much all you'll need in chemistry ever. There's also the classical system for a couple of the ancient known metals. So copper, iron, tin, and lead only have two possible charge states. And so this system the higher charge, it doesn't matter what the number is, but the higher of the two possible charge states gets the IC ending, and the lower possible charge gets the OUS ending. And you use the classic stem of the word. So for copper, cuprum. For iron, ferrum. For tin, stanum. For lead, plumbum. And the higher of the two charges becomes cupric, or ferric, or stanic, or plumbic. And the lower of the two charges becomes cuprus, or ferrus, or stanus, or plumbus. Notice it doesn't matter what the charge is, because copper 2 is the higher of the two copper charges, whereas iron 2 is the lower of the two iron charges. And so again, of the two possible charges, the higher one gets the ick ending, and the lower one gets the us ending. That being said, this system is almost never used because it only works with metals that can have two charges. And most transition metals can have more than two charges, and so this doesn't apply. And so basically, we really only use the classical system with these uh, metals and nothing else. So name the compound, F-E-S. Well, when you're dealing with metals that can have multiple charges, you have to figure out what the charge is based on the anion. Here we have sulfide. Sulfide is in group 6. It's negative 2. And that negative 2 is being balanced by one cation of iron. It has to be positive 2 to balance out the negative 2. So we know this is iron 2 sulfide or ferrous sulfide. Again, you figure out the negative charges and then find the right positive charge to neutralize that. And so you have to go by the negative first in these cases. So I name this compound. Chloride is in group 7. It's negative 1. There's three of them. And therefore, I would need chromium 3 chloride. Because the chromium would have to be positive 3 to balance out the three negative 1 charges. Copper 1 oxide. Oxide is negative 2. This copper is plus 1. We need two coppers and one oxygen. Cu2O.
Whereas copper 2 oxide would just be CuO, it would be a 1 to 1 ratio. In this case, copper 1 is only plus 1, we need two positive 1s to neutralize a negative 2. Tin 4 fluoride. Fluoride is negative 1. You need four of them to neutralize the positive 4 tin, that is D. All right, that is ionic compounds. Now let's move to molecular compounds. There are no charges here. And so with the ionic compounds, we knew how many of each anion and cation we needed because the charges had to neutralize. Since you don't have that as a guiding principle here, we're going to use Greek prefixes to state how many of each element there should be. Mono is one. Di is tr two. Tri is three, like a tricycle. Tetra is four, like a tetrapod. Penta is five. Hexa is six. Hepta is seven. Octa is eight, like an octopus. Nona is nine. And Deca is ten. And when you, name, when you name a compound, if you only have one of the first atom, you omit the first mono. So CO is carbon monoxide, not monocarbon monoxide. CO2 is carbon dioxide, not monocarbon dioxide. So when you only have one of the very first element, you actually omit that first mono. But if you only have one of the second element, you have to use mono. And then all the other prefixes are always there. So P2O5, diphosphorus, pentoxide. Two phosphoruses, five oxygens. And pentaoxide is shortened to pentoxide because it's easier to say. And so when you have two vowels adjacent to each other, you're allowed to do that. C, Cl4, one carbon, four chlorines, carbon tetrachloride. Again, you don't have to say the first mono because you omit the first mono if there's only one of the first element. So this is carbon tetrachloride, which was a great solvent, but it causes cancer, so we don't use it anymore. SO2, sulfur dioxide. N2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide. Two nitrogens, five oxygens. So we have two totally different systems here. How do you know which system to use? Well, if you have a metal and a non-metal, you'll have an ionic compound, and therefore you have to use the rules we saw for ionic compounds. If you have two non-metals, or a metalloid and a non-metal, for example silicon tetrachloride, you have a molecular compound and you'll use these rules. So if you have a metal and a non-metal, you have an ionic compound and you'll use the rules for ionic compounds. If you have two non-metals or a metalloid and a non-metal, you'll have a molecular compound and you'll use these rules. Certain binary compounds containing hydrogen behave as acids in water and have special names. So when hydrogen chloride is acidified, it becomes hydrochloric acid. Notice it goes from gas to aqueous. Hydrogen is always written first in an acid formula, and that indicates that it's an acidic hydrogen. Notice with CH4 and NH3, because the nitrogens are not written first, they are not acidic. So to name a binary acid, we'll first have the prefix hydro, followed by the root of the second element, and ic. Hydrochloric acid. And then you end with the word acid. Hydrosulfuric acid. Hydroiodic acid. Hydroselenic acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Hydro, then the stem of your nonmetal, and then ic acid. That is for naming binary acids. So here's a quick review of binary compounds. Molecular compounds are two nonmetals, or a metalloid and a nonmetal, and we use the Greek prefixes. For the ionic compounds, it's a metal and a nonmetal. And if the metal can have varying charges, you'll use a Roman numeral or the classical system to articulate which charge is on the metal. Then you get the root of the nonmetal and then IDE, like iron 3 chloride. If we acidify them, 
In water, they become acids, hydrochloric acid. If the compound is not in water, then it maintains its molecular name. So hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen iodide. They only become acids when they dissociate in water. And then hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. So name this compound. Copper is a metal. Chloride is a nonmetal. We know we have an ionic compound. Copper can be either plus one or plus two, so we have to state the charge. Chlorine is in group seven. It's negative one. There are two negative ones, so a total negative charge of negative two. Being neutralized by one ion of copper, so it has to be copper two. Copper two chloride. The classical name would have been cupric chloride, but that, that wasn't an option there. C3N2. These are both nonmetals, therefore this must be a molecular compound. We'll use the molecular rules. Tricarbon dinitride. Three carbons, two nitrogens. ICL3. Iodine and chlorine are both nonmetals, therefore this is a molecular compound. We'll use the molecular rules. Iodine trichloride. And again, you omit mono if you only have one of the first element. HCl, notice it's aqueous because that matters. Because it's aqueous, it's hydrochloric acid. If that was G in parentheses, it would have been hydrogen chloride. And so these compounds only become acids when they dissolve in water.